Hey guys, it's Nana, and today I'm going to talk to you about the books that I bought in London. So I went to London to spend Christmas with my family that lives there, and also my family from California came with me too. Well, not with me, with me, but came at the same time, and we had so much fun. It was a lot of like relaxing, eating so much food. I ate way too much. <laughs> But you know, that's what the holidays are all about, right? So my family lives kind of outside of London and we went into London a couple days to do some things, see some things, and really I just dragged my cousins to a few different bookstores. So I think I got seven books total, which I will show to you shortly, and I also picked up a few stationary bits, which I will show off to you too. So the first place I visited was Persephone Books, and I think it was the one that I was most excited about. I mean, okay, let's be real, I was excited about all of them, but I was just really excited to get the chance to visit Persephone since they don't have stores anywhere else and you know they're a small independent press so I really wanted to check out their shop and purchase one of their books. So when we got there it's on like the cutest little street and they just have like a beautiful storefront and it was a quiet day after Christmas and there were just a few people browsing in the store so I really got the chance to walk around and kind of read all of the little descriptions. They had handwritten descriptions next to each of the books, like a little plot summary and you know who might enjoy it and I absolutely love that. It definitely helped me choose my book. And then they also have these beautiful, beautiful bookmarks that correspond with the end papers that are inside their books. And I ended up picking this one. And this is different from the end papers that are in the book I chose, but I thought this way I get to appreciate two really pretty patterns. So anyway, on to the book. So I picked up The Making of a Marchioness by Frances Hodgson Burnett. There were two things that sold me about this book, really. One was a description. It just sounded like something I would really enjoy. And two, it's by Frances Hodgson Burnett, who wrote a little princess and also the secret garden just some really wonderful children's classics so i thought it would be really fun to check out a book of hers that i've never even heard of before i only really have heard of her popular ones and i believe this is kind of a rags to riches story it follows this young woman who works as a kind of assistant or a companion for some rich people and i believe she just comes from a poor background and eventually and it finds love and happiness and wealth. So that sounds right up my alley and I can't wait to read this one. And look at these gorgeous end papers. I mean, look at that. Lovely. So yeah, I'm really excited about this one. I tried to limit myself this whole trip because basically in the months, I spent a lot of money, particularly in December, like buying gifts and stuff. So I was really trying to cut back on my spending. So I only picked up one, but I wanted many more. Many, many more. Then the next bookstore I kind of stumbled onto, like it had, it wasn't one of the ones on the list of stores I wanted to go to, simply because I didn't know about it. We came out of the South Kensington tube station and we were kind of walking around the corner and it was right there. And they were like, do you want to go in? And I was like, do I want to go in? Like, hold me back. <laughs> of course I want to go in. So I went into that store, which was called the South Kensington Bookshop. It was really adorable, and there I picked up three books. So I got my first two Penguin Little Black Classic. I got The Tinderbox by Hans Christian Andersen, and I also got Femme Fatale by Guy de Maupassant. So I hope I didn't butcher that too badly. But I'm really excited to own two of these. I'm pretty sure they don't sell them in the U.S., so when I saw that they had a whole stack of them in this bookshop I was like ooh let me choose some. So these are both short stories. This one I feel like I've read a long time ago like this is a pretty popular fairy tale but I cannot remember the story of it so I'm excited to reread it and I've I've never read these stories by Guy de Maupassant. I just love these editions and I think they were such a good idea. Just these short little like novellas and mini collections and they're like tiny and you read it and you're like ah yes I've accomplished something so I'm excited to start my Penguin Little Black Classics collection. The other book I got at South Kensington was The Muse by Jesse Burton and I mean this cover is gorgeous and I've been wanting to read something by Jesse Burton so I'm not sure if I'm gonna start with The Miniaturist or this The Muse but this one I believe follows like this secret painting that has a hidden history and the characters are trying to find out the truth behind this painting and I love books that kind of like follow objects through history so I've heard good things about Jesse Burton's writing and I just could not resist this cover like not even a little bit I didn't even try I was like mine <laughs> so if you guys have read Jesse Burton let me know if I should read this one first or if I should read the miniatures first the last bookstore I went to during my trip was foils and foils was just uh, like 
so beautiful. I told my cousin I could be here for days and days. Like she actually had to remove me from the bookstore because we were gonna miss our train. But there, I, we just barely scratched the surface. I think we were there for like maybe 30, 40 minutes and we were in like one section. I just kind of made it to the fiction section. So I definitely, definitely have to go back because that place is huge and beautiful and I want to buy all of the books. I picked up two books while I was there and I think this one is my favorite out of the whole haul and it's Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I already read this a few years ago and absolutely loved it but I've never owned a copy because I had borrowed it from the library at the time. And then when Fourth Estate released these beautiful, beautiful editions that feature Nigerian print fabric as the background of the cover. I just fell in love with them so I got one of these editions and I really really want to get the other ones I think these editions are gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and I really wanted to own a copy because this is one of my favorite books of all time and probably the first I think I talked about this or maybe I, I was talking to someone else about this but this is one of the first books where I felt like I identified with the character like on a not just like certain characteristics but I was like this girl could be me or like, you know, could be related to me. It was just so awesome to see a reflection of myself in this main character and it's something I hadn't even known that I hadn't experienced it until I did for the first time. So I have so much love for this book. And actually speaking of representation, there was a really great article in Elle about uh, the writer who decided to read only books by black women last year and she kind of talks about her journey and how that affected her so amazing article i will link it down below long story short i'm really pleased to own this edition because i feel like this is such a special book to me and i deserve to have it in a nice pretty edition to hold on to and last but not least i picked up the mothers by Britt bennett so if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this book pop up in my feed a lot recently because I was just reading it, but you might have noticed that I had the hardcover edition. And the reason for that is, so I bought this edition at Foils in London because I was like, ooh, new release in paperback, like that's so awesome. I love that they have new releases in paperback and not hardcover only. So I was excited to read it because I didn't own it yet and I had been meaning to read it. And then I got home and opened up a package and I also had another copy of The Mothers, the hardcover US edition, which I'd won in a giveaway. So basically I forgot that the reason I was holding off on buying the book was because I won it in a giveaway and I knew I'd be getting a copy at some point. I completely forgot that while I was in London and I just picked up this paperback edition. So now I have two copies of The Mothers. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I'm not sure I need to keep both. So I don't know, maybe I'll do a giveaway or something like that. But this is one that I was really excited to read and just finished. So I'll be talking about it more in an upcoming video. So aside from books, another thing that I absolutely love and am obsessed with probably is stationery. And I, dragged my cousins to this stationery store in London called Kiki K. And when we got there, I was like a kid in a candy store, basically. They actually, she took a picture of me because she's like, you, you just look so happy. And I was, I was. So I picked up just a few little bits. Again, small things that I could carry home easily. So I got these really pretty gold binder clips and I just think these will be nice for kind of keeping open my bullet journal as I'm doing spreads or just you know, looking pretty on my desk. I'm sure I will find some way to use them. I also picked up this adorable polka dotted happy birthday card for my friend whose birthday is at the end of January and she also appreciates pretty stationery. So I know she will appreciate this. And then because I love to collect notebooks basically and I thought this would make a nice little souvenir slash useful gift to myself, <laughs> I got this notebook and it's got like little London images on it. It's got the red buses, the telephone booth, Big Ben, Tower Bridge. I just thought it was really cute and it would come in handy. So I have my bullet journal, which is a Loish term 1917. And then I have my other journal where I just kind of jot down my thoughts on the day. And I go through different notebooks for that. So I collect these pretty notebooks and just kind of use them as I fill another one up. And I thought this one would be a nice reminder of my trip to London. And last but not least, I picked up this gorgeous copper pen from Kiki K. And it's like got a really nice weight to it. 
I also tested it out in the store because I'm very particular about the way my pens write and this one felt very smooth. Also, I'm kind of obsessed with copper at the moment. I feel like I go through different phases where I'm like really into one thing and right now copper is one of them. So when I saw this pen, I was like, do I really need this pen? No, not at all. But then I picked it up, put it down, picked it up, put it down and realized I couldn't leave the store without it. So I treated myself. And here it is. <laughs> so those are all of the books and bits that I picked up while I was in London and I cannot wait to go back. There's so many more places that I wanted to visit and so much more that I wanted to do that we just didn't get to this time. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you've read any of the books that I mentioned or you want to, definitely let me know. And let me know if you are stationary obsessed like me. Do you have more pretty notebooks than you could possibly use in one lifetime? <laughs> let me know down in the comments below. If you want to talk to me elsewhere, I am on Goodreads, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I will link up all of my profiles down below. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday or whatever day you're watching this, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!